Margot had changed races. When I rushed into TGI Fridays and left the summer's oppressive triple-digit heat at my back, I searched for a 20-something woman with melanin-filled skin, was hunting from booth to booth when someone eased up behind me, touched my shoulder. When I turned around, I saw a pale woman covered in tats and body piercings, a shapely number as goth as Melrose Boulevard. Ken Swift? Yeah? Do I know you? It's me. Me who? My girl. Last time I saw her, she was a beautiful shade of brown and had dark, wavy hair. But she scrubbed away her melon, her skin now that of an untanned white woman. Broke my fucking heart and left me speechless at the same time. Nervous, she said. You got here just in time. I think our table is ready. Her cell phone rang as soon as she said that. She looked at the number, frowned, didn't answer. I imagined my ex-wife had done that a million times to my calls after she left me. TGI Friday's Ladera was crowded like microwaved chicken wings with the best meal ever created. I had asked Margot if she wanted to meet me in Inglewood at Zula Ethiopian and Eritrean Restaurant in Hyde Park Plaza, a place I'd eaten at least once a month since they opened. But she had turned down that offer. Now I understood why. This shouldn't have surprised me, but it did. After we were seated, awkwardness and silence covered us. Other Afrocentric sisters in the room gave me the side eye, looked at me like I was a traitor, a sellout. Black men grinned, checked out Margot. She had the skin of a white woman, but her shape remained African. Margot sucked the metal in her tongue, then asked, You okay? I'm fine. You okay? The way you keep looking at me, I don't like people staring at me like that. I relaxed my gaze, regrouped. How much money did you say you needed from me? I think you heard me loud and clear when I said I wanted 50000 That's a lot of money. How soon can you get it? I rat-a-tat-tatted my fingers on the table, exhaled. Let's break bread and talk about it. Her knuckles were still dark. I'd bet her elbows and knees and the tops of her toes were still of the Negro hue, too. Those areas couldn't be bleached, and she'd never be as white as the photos Rachel Dolezal's parents probably keep on a dresser. I felt their pain in my bone marrow. We read the menus, gave our orders, and were stuck facing each other. Margot wore gloomy makeup, dusky lipstick, and many tattoos. She took in my trendy wardrobe, shook her head like she didn't approve of my wearing straight leg jeans and a gray suit coat over a T-shirt with Muhammad Ali on the front. I asked, how many body piercings do you have? Why, Ken Swift? I see four in each ear, your lip, one in your nostrils. I have one in my clit and one in each nipple. Is that what you want to know? I was just asking. Should I tell you what the one in my tongue is all about? Maybe we should talk about the weather. No, we can continue chatting about the things you see wrong with me. I never said anything was wrong with you. The one in my tongue? Do you want to know why I have this one? No need to take the talk any further. After the waiter brought our meals and left, I picked up my spoon and took a mouthful of clam chowder. My taste buds were too refined for fast food. I was particular about what I ate away from home. Very biased. Margot cleared her throat and I raised my eyes, looked at her. Palms down on the table, she shook her head and stared at me like I was a sacrilegious heathen. <laughs>